It's seven o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Our first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would recognize uh, Selectman Nordell to lead us. No, um, unlocking doors. <laughs> uh, uh, Selectman Musco, would you do the honors, please? Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God is indivisible. I am very sorry. I honestly could not see that he left. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as attendance goes, uh, three members of the selectmen are physically present. Two members are attending uh, virtually, both under COVID protocols. So we're all present and accounted for. Um, I'm gonna ask for a motion to recess the selectmen's meeting and convene the public hearing starting at seven o'clock PM. Can I have a motion to recess and convene? Selectman Musco will recess the board of selectmen meeting for the public hearing at 7.01 PM. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we're going to convene the public hearing. This pertains to agenda item 8F. Um, and you'll recall at our last selectmen's meeting, um, there was um, a request from the uh, Connecticut Trolley Museum that the town partner with them to participate in what's called, what's called the Neighborhood Assistance Act. Um, and we all agreed to move forward with that. Um, I submitted the necessary paperwork to, to accommodate that. And one of the things that they came back with was that they needed a public hearing notice and minutes. I said, well, we didn't have a public hearing for that. We just did it at a, a selectmen's meeting. Well, the agenda and the minutes for that suffice. And they said that the statute actually requires that you'd, ha you'd have a public hearing um, on the notion of entering into um, that agreement. So in order to keep things moving along here, we're going to now hold a public hearing on uh, the question of whether or not the Neighborhood Assistance Act, that the town should engage it with, with the Trolley Museum to participate in a Neighborhood Assistance Act. Um, and then there will be minutes generated and then there will be, an, there was a public notice that was uh, already filed. So we'll be able to take care of all of the statutory requirements and move that forward. So with that, I'm gonna ask the deputy first selectman to chair the public hearing because I can't see who's there. So Marie, I'm gonna pass the chair to you if that's okay. Um, Marie D'Souza, um, chairing the meeting, present in the room, we have uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, Melissa Maltesi, uh, we have Bill Los, um, and we have the Chief um, uh, Kama Perry, um, and then we have two representatives from the data group um, that are not from town, um, neither is Melissa. Um, so um, at this point, the notice of the public hearing for the town of East Windsor Board of Selectmen. In accordance with Connecticut General Statute 12-632A, the Board of Selectmen shall hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 19, 2022, at 7 p.m. in person at Town Hall, John Daly, Junior Meeting Room, 11 Rye Street, Bradbrook, and via Zoom. Um, the purpose of this public hearing is to receive comment from the public regarding approval of the NAA-01-2020 Connecticut Neighborhood Assistant Act program proposed on behalf of the Connecticut Crowley Museum. Um, and the public notice was uh, dated in the Journal of Fire on my May 11, 2022, and I have it if anybody cares to see it. Um, would anyone in the public like to speak? Uh, Mr. Anderson? Yep, Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook. Uh, I totally agree with this. I think the town should help support the Trolley Museum and uh, move forward with the Connecticut Neighborhood Assistance Act program. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to comment? Anyone else like to comment? With that, that and all other comments, I would ask that we um, conclude uh, the public hearing for this matter. I move to adjourn the public hearing at 7.04 p.m. Second. 
You have to call a vote. Call for a vote. Everybody in agreement? Yes. Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. I would move that we oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was I was going to uh, so we've adjourned the public hearing um, and so I'm just going to call the regular meeting of the board of selectmen back to order I'll I'll take the chair if uh, if you don't mind um, and this is your chance <laughs> um, so uh, Peg one of the things that we just need to make sure is that there are separate and standalone minutes for that public hearing um, if you could take care of that that would be appreciated no problem thank you um, and as soon as we get those. Um, then I'll, I'll forward that along to DRS and we'll be uh, street legal in terms of the Neighborhood Assistance Act program. Um, okay, so we're on to approval of minutes. Uh, they were in the packet. Um, have, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes presented or prepared by PEG? Selectman Musco will move to approve the regular meeting minutes from May 5th, 2022. Selectman Nordell second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any corrections or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are adopted. Um, I don't have any communications. I don't have any resignations. We do have some reappointments. Um, we could do. Did I miss that? I'm sorry, I did miss that. Um, so Marie, once again, I'm going to ask you to, to call it off if there's anybody who's there because I, I can't see more than about a third of the room. Anyone? Um, Paul Anderson? Yep. Paul Anderson, 89 Main Street, Broadbrook. <clears throat> I doubt that I have to bring this to the attention of the selectmen, but uh, 99 Scanic Row, two houses there were there. Hatfield and McCoy battle going on and this ridiculous Santa Claus pumpkin thing. It's irritating. However, it's gone downhill. Now that there's an American flag involved, and I think it's gone beyond reasonable. So I just point that out. And some kind of communication from the selectmen might help dissuade this. It's not good. I'm not happy with the American flag being part of this personal tirade back and forth. It's inappropriate. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else for public participation? That's it, Jeff. Okay. Um, again, I have no communications. We have no resignations. We do have some reappointments. Um, and the, the terms are the terms in the board are consistent. So we could do B1 and two together or separately. We could do uh, B3 and four together or separately. <coughs> Is there a motion? Make a motion. Go ahead, Alan. I'll make a motion to reappoint uh, Karen Christensen uh, for the pension and retirement resident member for a term expiring June 1, 2026. And Edward Bowser, pension and retirement resident member for a term expiring June 1, 2026. Is there a second? Selectman Muska will second. Any discussion? I'll just say that they're, they both are attending meetings and they have good input, so glad to have them coming back. I'm actually surprised that at least one of them is coming back, but I'm glad to see that too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. B3. Make a motion to reappoint James Thurge to the Building Commission as a regular member for a term expiring June 1st, 2028. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed? Carries unanimously. B4. I'll move to reappoint Richard Pippen Jr. to the Building Commission as a regular member for a term expiring June 1st, 2028. Is there a second? Second. 
made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. New appointments. Um, William A. Lose uh, for the Town of East Windsor Bro Broadbrook Fire Commission alternate member for a term expiring June 30th, 2025. Is there a motion? Electman Musco will move to appoint William A. Lose to the Town of East Windsor Bro Broadbrook Fire Commission as an alternate member for a term expiring June 30th, 2025. Second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. Okay, now we're on to 8A, um, South Road Ownership Option Update. So the next thing that was on our to-do list for this um, was to do an 824 referral, which is a statutory requirement anytime a municipality is going to acquire or disperse uh, publicly held property. Because the town currently holds the ground that the homes sit on, we needed to do an 824 referral. Um, in your packet, there's actually correspondence back and forth between um, our new land use attorney um, and planning department staff, as well as, well as a memo from uh, Mike D'Amato uh, that argues favorably that we've already satisfied the 824 referral when the question was submitted to planning and zoning for the subdivision. Um, so the commission is aware of what the intention was um, and they have, um, already acquiesced to moving forward with it. So we don't need to do anything further on that. Um, the next step, I believe the next step will be, and I don't have my notes here at home, but my, I believe the next step is going to be that we convene a meeting with the property owners. Um, and then we do the, uh, the deed recordings after that. So we are, you know, to say we're on the three yard line is a pretty accurate depiction of where this process is. It's taken forever. It had to go through two legislative sessions but at the end of the day, we're gonna be able to disperse our uh, ownership of this property, sell it to the homeowners, and we'll do it in a way so that their interests are protected. So I just wanted to provide an update that we are as close to that as, as we have ever been. Um, and we don't need to do anything technical other than um, to now meet with the residents, my best recollection. Any questions or comments on that? Okay, just I'm not sure where I'm 27th, the Water Pollution Control Authority um, addressed uh, sewer issues with the subdivisions over there, and I believe it left with um, uh, they were going to contact um, the attorney um, and fill him in on that information. Um, but looks and Paul would like to comment because I missed that meeting. Um, but it's my understanding that the connectivity is going to be a problem on those units. Well, no, we. we oh. Sorry. The only so, thing outstanding is the easements, and it's the filing of the mylars, yeah. and we can sign off on the easements. That's it. Right. The, we Paul had actually come in the day after the last WPCA meeting to file the the um, deeds or the easement on the deed, and um, we couldn't do it because we didn't have the final mylar from J.R. Russo yet. So I don't know if that's been received since I've been out, uh, but. That is one of the left foot, right foot things that won't require any further action. It's just, you know, administrative on, on Paul's part and my part. Um, okay. <laughs> the next one. <coughs> discuss, discuss the resolution approving the lease purchase agreement and ESCO agreement for the broad fire department fire apparatus. So we went through all of the process that we need to go through in order to buy a new fire truck about a month ago. Um, a little more than that, a month and a half ago. Um, we did the Board of Selectmen um, process. We went through a town meeting. The paperwork was submitted to the leasing company ahead of the deadline. Um, and for whatever reason, the um, leasing company said that we got the paperwork to them too close to the deadline, so they weren't going to honor the deal. So that caused a little bit of a scramble. Um, and thanks to um, uh, John Madigan and to Jerry Bancroft and others to figure out a couple of options. Um, we have a new um, lease term that is held until June 12th. Um, and there was there were two companies that they got information from. Uh, and the long and short of it is leasing to the original company is one of those. And the dollar amount has not changed from what went to and was approved by town meeting. So there is no need for us to go through the additional machinations of another uh, public hearing, another board selectman meeting, and another town meeting. We nothing has materially changed, so the authorization is still valid, even though some of the um, 
uh, lease terms changed a bit. The dollar amount and the acquisition has not changed. So we're um, that's that was this item was put there in case there was a need for us to go through all of that. But I asked Amy to do an assessment of the original deal that was went to town meeting and um, the deal that uh, or the two pieces that um, the the fire guys did put in front of us. And the long and short of it is, if as long as we go with leasing two, we don't have to go through that process again. If we go with the other company, then we would have to go back through that process all by June twelfth. So. Um, that's the, the long and short of that. It's a, it was a placeholder agenda item. It serves as a good opportunity to give an update, but everything, once I'm able to get back and sign the documents, everything will be all systems go again. Okay. That brings us to agenda item 8F. Um, so we had that we, about 15 minutes ago, held the public hearing on um, the town's participation in the Neighborhood Assistance Act. I now would like a vote of affirmation to go ahead and submit that paperwork from the town so that we'll have uh, all of our uh, documentation squared away. So could I have, uh, unless there's, well, for discussion purposes, could I have a motion and a second on that? I'll make that motion that we go ahead and approve the Neighborhood Assistance Act um, vote for the property museum. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, now we, go, we come to a presentation from the beta group um, uh, regarding the work that they've done putting together the town parks master plan. Um, I, I can see uh, the back of Joe's head and I assume the back of Melissa's head. Um, hi, Melissa. Um, so, and I think I also see Randy, uh, and is that Nate too? And that's Nate too. Okay. So, <laughs> showing gentlemen, off. <laughs> gentlemen, I'm going to, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you. Um, if you need to share a screen, I'll let you do that. Um, we have a thumb drive to plug in to do the presentation. Yeah. So if, um, if you, Joe can help you get that set up, I'm sure. <laughs> You're going to share the screen here. Jay, I can't share it from here. They they have access to share it from here. Uh, from Does if, the if you have access to share, yes. So you can put the thumb drive in, right? Could I just have identification of who's there, please? I'm Joe Sauerhofer, extraordinaire. <laughs> Technical whiz. That's, that's all of the vowels, Peg. All of the vowels. Oh. Um, would the two gentlemen for the main group um, just identify this. yourself for the record? Randy Collins, um, Vice President, Beta Group. Nate Sosha, uh, Landscape Architect at Beta Group. Uh, oh, wait. You got to go in Zoom and share? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, bottom. Yeah, I mean, you bottom. guys. There you go. Yeah. There you go. You can see. sit right there. Here's a shared screen. Uh -huh. Oh, there I'll take this. Yeah. No, you got to go to. Well, he's got to find this folder. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Go uh, search. Uh, just search folders. Nobody goes on this computer. There you go. Explore folders. There you go. There you go. Nice. Can you see it now? Jay, can you see that? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, good. Zoom out just a touch, Nate. Yeah. Yeah. And can you minimize the uh, the people on the right so they don't have to look at each other? Good. All right, it's all yours. 
Well, um, thank you everyone for having us here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, my name is Nathan Sosha, here with Randy Collins from Data Group. And we're here to present the Parks and Recreation Master Plan for the town of East Windsor. Real quick on agenda, uh, project team introduction, project overview, presentation, and then we'll have a quick uh, listening and discussion, and then closing remarks and next steps. Um, the project team consisted of um, from the town, Melissa and Joe, and then uh, Randy Collins and myself. Uh, quick overview. We started this process back in October 2021, um, where we talked to Melissa and Joe and then began an inventory analysis of all the parks uh, in the study at our first uh, community meeting. We met with um, the town and community members and basically just listened to everyone to get a pretty good understanding of um, how the parks were used. Uh, from there, we began uh, developing preliminary designs for, uh, and preliminary designs are really about a, uh, roadmap for where we see the parks going forward for the next 20 to 30 years. And then uh, we shared these um, initial designs in February, this next community meeting where we again received uh, feedback from the community as well as the town, and then revised the uh, designs based off of that feedback. And you know, here we are today. Um, you. Um, you know, real quick on our um, how we view park design we see it as a combination of uh, the town's goals, uh, safety and regulatory guidelines, as well as community input, and getting um, feedback from all those different aspects to come with a um, consensus on the design. And then the uh, parks that we had within the study included East Windsor Park, Prospect Park, uh, Volunteer and Osborne Park, Town Hall Annex, the Abbey Road Soccer Complex, Broadbrook Pond Park, and Pierce Memorial Park. And um, you know, as we're learning about this, we saw that the parks were um, spread throughout the whole community, uh, with a cluster being near the town of Atlantic, and then the rest kind of um, around the whole area. And um, we kind of followed the uh, goals that were provided to us um, by the town, which was really developing a mission, uh, which really included um, reviewing the conditions, that analysis we mentioned to you previously, listening to the community, and then um, developing goals and from there, the master plans. And so we have um, each part, I'm just gonna try and get this perfectly lined up. So see each one um, as the, showing the existing conditions as they were um, back in 2021, and then uh, the proposal for each one and kind of quickly run through the goals of each park. Um, starting off with East Windsor Park, and I might town go back and forth a couple of times here. Um, can everyone see my mouse cursor when I move through here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we see the primary goal starting from the entry of the park and redeveloping the access point, cleaning up that circulation route, and then uh, going into the different parking lots, um, making sure we have ADA access to each parking lot, and cleaning those lots up a little bit as well. Um, coming into the core of the park, um, there's a few different elements here. And what we really wanted to develop was that turn it more into a campus uh, central core with a network of paths tying together the recent bands that I show uh, with the concession stands. And then um, a little bit down here, um, developing the uh, lawn games, including the horseshoes and bocce and things like that. And then immediately across the area, making sure we provide some safe access across the parking lot, developing um, a rental facility uh, for birthday parties right adjacent to the existing um, splash pad. And then uh, coming further down the parking lot, providing a turnaround point at this area, like a roundabout uh, with a loading area for larger events at the band shell. Going even further down to the last parking lot, developing this area um, in the soccer areas there and the way the fields are laid out right now, and it didn't have changed since this project started, uh, turning that 90 degrees to get the north-south orientation to maximize, um, to really limit the amount of the sun's effect on um, playing out there, and then expanding it a little bit, um, which we'd want to do by uh, grading it out a little bit further along the edges and then um, adding an irrigation system in there for uh, long-term um, durability of the 
the lawn areas. And then uh, back here, number 13, this is a, uh, a stockpile area, so our understanding. So screening that a little bit. And then along the whole perimeter, we'd like to see a um, trail or path system circumnavigating the park. And then within that trail system, having um, adult fitness areas, um, kind of like a serpent um, incrementally along that area. So that when you come visit, whether you're um, walking or running or jogging, um, having little activities along the way. And then we, we want all these um, improvements coordinated over the next 20, 25 years uh, with the dredging of the swimming area to keep that at its uh, best maintenance. And then um, we're probably proponents of um, reducing maintenance where possible. So we're actually recommending some of, the, some of the lawn areas currently along the peripheral um, edge to be converted into a, a low mow uh, maintenance area where instead of mowing every week, you might go down to mowing um, every other week or three times a year um, to allow it to turn to a meadow grass and allow some of that edges to uh, naturalize. And this would work in combination with um, providing some screening along these edges to help separate the different uses between the residential and the park itself. And then um, one of the big differences here is that there's currently a uh, baseball field in this location with a backstop and dugouts and all that stuff. And um, our understanding is that it has been um, not utilized um, that much anymore. And so we see it interimly um, being turned into a multi-use field area where the final um, use for the space could be developed later on. And lastly, um, adding a uh, playground on the opposite side of Reservoir Ave across from the state area so that the town could have the playground for um, whether or not they had access into the park. Moving on to um, Osborne and Volunteer Park. Can you ask questions as you go on or do you want to wait to the end? Oh, um, do you want to wait to the end? Sure. Um, and I'll go quicker as we get smaller parks. Uh, so, again, very much like East Windsor Park, adding a, a circulation system connecting the different parking lots, the field, the concession stand, and then a playground, um, improving those parking areas by adding sidewalks where necessary, and then providing some crosswalks, better integrating Osborne and Volunteer Park, and expanding that loop area, uh, enhancing the pavilions, and bringing up the code where um, there's been uh, as they've kind of degraded a little bit over the years to make sure that all the railings and um, boards are in place. Um, developing a um, universal accessible uh, playground, and this kind of comment uh, is across um, all the parks is, you know, uh, over the next 20, 25 years, begin a cycle of um, uh, you know, allowing the playgrounds, which have been around for quite a while, to um, come down and bring new equipment, which has changed over the past 20, 25 years, and more modern equipment. Uh, be developed and make sure that it's uh, universally accessible. In addition, um, some uh, minor grading by the basketball court and then incorporating pickleball courts on the other side of the basketball court and adjusting um, these uh, former baseball fields into multi-use fields, which could be used for soccer and things like that. And then um, allowing a little bit of more uh, vegetation to regrow along the peripheral area. And then uh, we, there's a wet spot back here allowing that to wet that out. Moving on to the um, to Abbey, Abbey Road Soccer Complex, I say that correctly. Um, so we, we're really excited about this area. We think there's a lot of potential in it. Um, and as it stands right now, there are two fields. And so one of the biggest um, changes to this would be taking the uh, southernmost field and expanding it from one soccer field into two soccer fields and then which would include a lot of um, clearing and grading and being mindful of the wetland boundaries and things like that to fit it in and um, providing uh, a uh, high quality athletic field lighting system at the uh, lower field here as the primary and perhaps I could expand later on and uh, providing a um, loop walk around the entire perimeter of the area to provide that walking trail and then tying this into some different nature trails and adjacent town properties where possible. And um, that's pretty much it.
moving on to uh, Pierce Memorial Park. Um, starting from the beginning of the parking area, developing ADA parking spot, finding a gateway going into the park with a path to a new uh, universal typical uh, play area with some seating and benching and picnic tables along the back, incorporating um, pickleball striping into the basketball court to develop the basketball court into a multi-use area, enhancing or updating the flagpole, as well as removing the old backstop to the baseball field and then developing the field into multi-use fields. The Prospect Park, uh, similar treatment. Um, this one has a fairly limited parking uh, at the entrance. And so one of the first uh, priority goals we believe is um, expanding that parking area into the park so that the uh, fields could have more use, more users, and then adding a, um, a circulation system to the park, connecting the parking area to the playground and then to the um, basketball court, which we'd also recommend developing into multi-use courts by incorporating pickleball striping in combination with the basketball areas, um, expanding the connection where possible um, to get access on Prospect Hill, enhancing signage where feasible to um, provide more visibility to this park, um, continue to enhance these fields back here, and develop them into multi-use field. And uh, there's a wet area down here, allowing that to go back to uh, natural vegetation and wet meadow. The uh, town hall annex, uh, we see the prior uh, priorities being providing a sidewalk along Dean Avenue and School Street, as well as providing a connection from Main Street to Dean Avenue so that one could traverse around the entire area. Um, in addition to that, expanding the playground, incorporating the universal access playground that's there, as well as um, adding to it and providing a walk system from the parking lot to the playground, as well as um, potential access for a uh, seasonal ice skating rink back here. And then when the rink's down to use, of course, developing the field into a multi-use field and then allowing this um, lawn area to revert back into a Lomo type area existing uh, swing set. And finally, uh, Broadbrook um, Pond Park. You see the priorities being um, providing uh, ADA access to the parking lot, uh, providing a path system here with a uh, universal disco fishing dock um, at the end here with some benches right along the sidewalk and then uh, providing pedestrian access to our new sidewalk right along here and uh, enhancing the pavilion, as well as, um, you know, trying to accommodate um, boat usage better. And we know this wants to be done in conjunction with the dredging of this pond, but some enhancements could be adding a uh, uh, launching or loading dock on this side, as well as uh, we've seen some communities have uh, a canoe storage that's community run, which could lock canoe or kayak up so you don't have to be toting it back and forth um, from your home every single time. And sometimes you charge fees for these things too. So it's a good money making opportunity. And um, those are our recommended enhancements in summary. And uh, I'd like to open up for a conversation. Well, I hope too soon because my question that I had, you addressed it on the next slide. When you had comments that Tom, putting a park across the street um, from the reservoir so that when it's closed, they have the thing. It's a good idea. I thought you were going to place one within the park, but it's there. So, <laughs> so on it. So I, I would just say, I, I think you guys did a fantastic job of uh, giving us a roadmap looking ahead. Um, is there going to be like a, a hard copy of a final report? Did you price out the Im improvements that you've identified so that we have something we can, you know, when, when the call comes, what do we have that's a shovel ready project? We can just grab something off the shelf. Yeah, absolutely. We are still crunching some numbers and we're hoping to provide some prices for um, a few select areas. I mean, we, with pricing the way it's been so recently and being all over the place, we don't think it will be 
too helpful having pricing for everything because by the time you get to it, it's going to be completely different anyways. But targeting those um, first priority projects and giving you a good, accurate price estimate, we're, we're going to get that to you in a few days. Okay, great. No, is it okay to ask what the targeting area is? The areas we're looking right now for price estimating include um, these fields back here. Um, so, uh, which would include um, a few different elements, including uh, reiterate <coughs> irrigation system, um, lawn areas, and um, uh, various elements to enhance this area back here. And the other focus area uh, was going to be on um, Abbey Road and looking at the uh, enhancements of these two fields here, which would include uh, uh, pre-construction clearing needed to have this be addressed. Um, how would you expand these fields over like that with the various elements included in that? And finally, providing lighting for the uh, lower field, um, which is probably too small to see, but called, I think it's field three. Both of those dovetail right into the uh, bond funds that the towns received um, from from the state just a couple of weeks ago. Um, pertaining to the Abbey Road in particular and the locating of a third field, did you uh, did you look at or would we need to consider uh, wetlands implications? We did a preliminary uh, review of the wetlands, and um, you know it is a concern. Um, we're, we're trying to limit the expanse into it as the greatest tree possible. And um, but as it gets you know further developed, I think it would have to be um, you know some has to go out there and actually uh, flag some wetlands and things like that to make sure um, the viability of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I would I would say I mean anybody that's been down there that field you can see the the amount of wetnesses that that if you look at the the um, existing conditions there all along that existing field gets pretty wet right in that tree line there. Um, so definitely have to make sure we know what we're doing when we try to put a field there, otherwise it might not be usable. Absolutely. Other questions or comments from for the folks from Beta? Um, I see you, you're, you're talking about the pricing to basically do some soccer fields in the two parks. What about improvements? Are you doing any pricing for improvements to Osborne? Uh, and specifically, you know, you had showed if you could go back to that, uh, the new version of Osborne. Yeah. So like, you know, where the, the ball field is, that's uh, east, uh, you know, of the parking lot. You know the outfield there that gets real wet. You know, and I see how you have you know section B is is you know going to be low mo. That like that whole backside gets really wet. Or if you're going to do work in this, you know, to improve those or create those two multi-use soccer fields uh, and that and that softball field, do you do you envision like needing to bring in fill? I mean, have you gone that far to figure out? Like how you keep these areas from being wet because they do tend to be pretty wet. Yeah. Especially if you do spring soccer and baseball, you're you have to be wet um, We, you know, during the analysis process, have done a preliminary review of different conditions, including soils and wetlands and things like that. But basically, off of the town's GIS, and so we we're aware of the issue. Um, you know, I think it's as you dig into it, there's a few different approaches to handle it, including like you're saying, fill surface drainage and then additionally under drainage. Um, and then looking at the soil and seeing if you can modify some of the textures to allow it to be more porous to help with infiltration as well. But you know, that would be really developed later on as you get into these projects and start looking at some you know, best practices. Other questions or comments? Seems like overall, these are just conceptual. There's not really a lot that's actionable, except for we could take this to somebody and say, give us a price on this and how much would it take, right? Yeah, I mean, like we said earlier, this is really a roadmap, um, you know, prioritizing the different goals and then um, 
you know, getting feedback on, on what everyone agrees is really the priorities. And then from there, we would, um, once projects are established, we'd be more than happy to really develop into those projects. And, you know, I, I think, you know, not every, there's a, no plan is correct, but some are useful is the, the phrase. Uh, and we think this is gonna be a useful plan for, for targeting things. And we think everything in here is feasible, but you know, things do change. So I, I would just say like, this is a really interesting time to be in government because uh, it seems like money is falling from everywhere for mm -hmm. projects like this. And um, oftentimes we have to scramble to figure out like, okay, somebody needs an answer in an hour with, uh, for what we can do with, with state or federal money that may appear. Um, now we'll have something where we can actually use this as a reference point and draw from that when opportunities present themselves in the future. I think this is it, one of the things that's most appealing to me about this is that we don't have to do it all and we don't have to do it all in order. Um, so the improvements that we can make when the opportunity is there, we now have a studied plan that we can point to and say, um, let's, let's see if we can accomplish item number four. You know, and then once item number four is accomplished, we move on to item number seven. So I think this is a valuable thing to have. Like, like you said, um, there's some value to this. Listen, we, we hope this acts as a living document where um, as pieces are done, they're removed from the list and then new items are added and it's adjusted as um, things change. But Jason, Joe here, the important thing is here is that this is what the community, the people who gave us input from the community, this isn't a staff decision or anything like that. This is what the community said, this is what we want where. Yep, I agree. Other comments? Guys, thank you very much. We'll look forward to, to reading the, the final proof. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> um, agenda item 9B um, is a request from Director of, of Recreation and Community Services, Melissa Maltesi, for an alcohol waiver for the summer concert series. Um, we all did this last year. Um, I think we all would recognize to, to great fanfare. It, the program last year was a great success. And I know Melissa has been working hard to build on it this year. Um, one of the things I would say about the uh, alcohol waiver that we granted last year is I think I was all, at all six of the, the concerts. And I don't recall a single instance where anybody abused it. Um, and I think that was, um, I think that's a real testament to you know, the fact that we can do something like this safely, responsibly, and have a good time enjoying each other's company. So um, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the application? I'll make a motion to approve the application for the acceptance of the alcohol establishment at East Winter Park on um, dates June 16, 23rd, 30, July 7, 14, 21, 28, August 2nd, 11th, 18th, and 25th. Um, and any other dates related to the summer concert series. Like my must go a second. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Jason, I just Sarah. Sarah, I just want to echo what you said. Um, as far as no one abusing it, everyone was extremely respectful, cleaned up after themselves, and people really look forward <laughs> to the concert series. So I'm really glad that we have it going in town and um, glad that we could do this. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries unanimously. See how I corrected that? <laughs> I did bring posters of the concert series, so oh, wow. uh, you guys can hang them out to different yeah, sure. hot off the presses. So awesome. I'll give you a couple and you can Thank you. give them out wherever. Yep. And there'll be one for you for the minutes.
Thank you. I was going to ask for one. <laughs> Got you. Thank you. All right. I think we are on to tax refunds. Lechman Muska will move to approve the tax refunds totaling $3,164.69. Second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, Selectman's reports. All right. Um, first, I want to apologize for participating in, participating in tonight's meeting uh, remotely. Um, as pretty much everybody has heard at this point, my family and I are homesick with COVID. Um, which is why my report is also going to be a little bit shorter than usual. Uh, last Tuesday, voters in town approved the town budget on the first refer referendum. Not only will this allow the town to move forward into the next fiscal year with a thoughtful and reasonable approach to town and school administration, but it saves taxpayers the $7,000 expense of having to conduct multiple referenda. When the Board of Finance finalized the budget proposal ahead of the referendum, the mill rate was expected to go up by a very modest 0 0.07 mills. That was before the state of Connecticut adopted their amended budget, which actually included more municipal aid to the town of East Windsor. Because of that, the budget that was adopted last week will actually result in a mill rate decrease of 0.12 mills, or nearly two tenths of a mill less than was expected. The current mill rate is 34.5 and the newly adopted mill rate will be 34.38. This will result in most homes in East Windsor seeing a tax cut this year. Motor vehicles will also see the mill rate capped on their vehicles at an amount not to exceed 32.46 mills. Thank you to all those who voted last week. Um, I am excited to share that, uh, the, uh, that House Bill 5166 passed both chambers of the legislature in concurrence prior to the conclusion of the legislative session. Thank you to our legislators, Senator Anwar, Representatives Foster and Hall, for their adv advocacy securing passage of what had pejoratively become known as the Bowser Bill, um, a bill that will help towns with our form of government be more competitive in utilizing tax agreements for economic development. A lot of time has been spent in recent weeks trying to find a resolution for residents at the School Hill Association um, as they seek solutions to a contaminated community well. I've met with representatives of Connecticut Water Company at their office in Middletown on May 10th, and we met again with them, our legislators, the association and the Department of Public Health yesterday. Through some really collaborative efforts, we're able to share several different options for the association to consider so that they have safe potable drinking water. Um, that's all I have this week, respectfully submitted. Um, and I would turn to Marie D'Souza. Um, I attended the uh, Housing Authority meeting last night, um, May 18th. Um, three noteworthy things that are uh, transparent. Um, Barbara McGrath from UConn School of Law um, met with them and discussed um, the advantages of applying for a 501c3 status for um, Park Hill. Um, that was a very lengthy conversation and educational for the board. Um, so um, she's going to go forward. Um, in doing that, um, they put together a committee to oversee the 501c3 if and when it gets approved. And as of last night, there's four people that have been signed to from the um, commission, uh, uh, Katie Winfrow and uh, Mark Simmons um, from the board, um, and then a resident um, uh, from the uh, tenant association will be appointed in a community outward, um, myself as the fourth um, individual to uh, be on that board. Um, and then as it gets developed and there's a new, um, they'll take another look at um, those that are appointed and add a couple more people to that board and remove whoever is no longer available. Um, so that's going to be excellent moving forward for there. Also, Penny Fisher from the Connecticut Housing uh, Financial Authority, the assistant manager met with Linda Collins, um, the director at Park Hill to review their policies and for the facilities where they haven't been out for a couple of years due to COVID. Um, and things seem to be um, fine according to them. Um, and they also um, recognize May as National Older Americans Month um, with the theme for 2022 be an age my way. Um, so to honor the, those up at Park Hill that meet that criteria, we're going to have a luncheon um, tomorrow um, for them. I'm going to call it up for tonight. 
Yeah, I was looking forward to going to that. Obviously not now. Um, Charlie. Okay, uh, I only had two meetings since our last one. Uh, the first was last Thursday, East Windsor PTO held their final meeting of the year. Uh, they reported a very healthy year um, financially, despite um, with COVID um, fundraising being difficult, uh, but thanks to the town um, and the COVID relief fund um, and the PTO taking advantage of that, they were able to raise um, a good amount of money um, to continue to do things for the schools. Um, they do a lot of things in support of the schools, um, help pay for field trips, um, one book, one school event, um, appreciation days of all sorts, different types. And uh, one of the last things they're doing this year is they're having a uh, color fun run um, this Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at the East Windsor Middle School track. And it was a pre-sign up event, but they are leaving it open to people that want to show up the day of the event. Um, they just ask that you wear a white t-shirt and they will supply you with sunglasses and it's a $5 per person um, entry to do that. And basically what they'll be doing is just having people run around the middle school. Um, they have kind of like a, I think it's about a three quarter mile track set up there, gravel track, and they'll be having um, other people throw colors on you as you run by. So it sounds like a great time. I have to work. So unfortunately I won't be there, but uh, they'll be having that. And then last night I attended the board of finance meeting, um, which there wasn't a lot happening at the town financials um, as far as tax collections are very high and uh, in good shape for, for this year. Um, the board's not forecasting any huge shortcomings or um, found monies, um, although they were saying there was a little bit, um, looks like people coming back to us from um, the, uh, from healthcare, um, some savings there. Uh, and the Board of Education reported that they're heavily concentrating on estimating their salary budget for the rest of this year um, to make sure that they can pay out their teachers for the remainder of this school year because they're down to the wire on the last of their school funds for the year. And that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Um, Alan. Okay, so due to a, a light meeting cycle the last two weeks and the fact that I've been out of the state quite a bit, you'll be happy to hear that I am sparing you my report this week. <laughs> Sarah. That's okay, I'll make up for it because I, mine is rather lengthy. Um, the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting on May 9th was not held due to lack of a quorum. On May 10th and May 16th, the Arts and Culture Commission met. The commission is excited to promote and support local artists and craftsmen by selecting up to five artists a week to showcase and sell their products during the East Windsor Parks and Recreation Summer Concert Series. East Windsor artists will be given preference and the cost will be $10 per space payable to the Arts and Culture Commission. If you wish to be added to the artist bank or have any questions, please email ewartsandculture at gmail.com. Also, the Connecticut Trolley Museum has teamed up with Rise Up for Arts and our Arts and Culture Commission to produce an interactive mural at the Trolley Museum, painted by local artist Heather Herendine from Lights and Darks. The mural will be focusing on the trolley era. And there is a GoFundMe page that is set up to help produce the funds needed to complete the mural. And I've included that link here. Um, on May 11th, I attended the Board of Education meeting. The board received a presentation from Mr. Masters, Dr. Helleridge, and AP class students to discuss the $20,000 Voice for Change grant received from the state of Connecticut. This was a collaboration of three of Mr. Masters' government classes in five of Dr. Helleridge's classes. Um, they each put forth an idea which was voted on by the student body and Dr. Helleridge's group um, on a study lounge was the winner. The study lounge will help with mental health, hopes to improve grades and will be a safe and comfortable place for students to study. 
Uh, the initiatives from the portrait of the graduate used were informed lifelong learners and responsible citizens. Underclassmen were involved in this project, so it's really great that they'll get to see the project through completion over the next school year. A financial report was given by Ryan Galloway. Mr. Galloway set a goal of the end of July for establishing a new structure for the chart of accounts for the next fiscal year. Um, he will also be meeting with South Windsor for guidance on how their Board of Education accounts were set up, and he will be going through an investment assessment with Munis to see what went wrong previously. Daryl Rulliard discussed PSAT and SAT scores for students graduating between 2022 and 2025. And unfortunately, our district scores are not where they need to be. And we ranked in the bottom third of Alliance districts. Um, scores like this are being seen like this around the state and are a reflection of the COVID pandemic and students not being in school for one and a half years. The district is working diligently to offer support to students and bring scores up. But on a positive note, two East Windsor High School students participated and graduated from a CNA program and three students participated and graduated from a program at Dymo Tech. These programs were being offered by the veteran, excuse me, by the Vernon Adult Regional Based Education Program and East Windsor was very fortunate to participate. Um, then on May 12th, I attended the Veterans Commission meeting. The commission put the finishing touches on their Memorial Day Parade and Ceremony program. This year, the East Windsor High School Band will be participating and we will have a student singing the national anthem. On May 2nd, Bob Light was reappointed as the town's municipal service officer. He is excited to con continue serving in this capacity for the town of East Windsor. And the commission reviewed applications submitted for their scholarship program. They give two East Windsor High School seniors $750 each, and they did make their selections. And the group also finalized the eligibility and criteria for the East Windsor Veterans Temporary Assistance Grant Program that will now be offered in conjunction with East Windsor Social Services. And I think that's more than enough. <laughs> Uh, we'll now go to our second public participation. Um, Marie, I'll turn it back over to you. If there's anybody in the room who would like to speak. Anyone in the room like to speak? Let's think. Bill Lowe's 44 Melrose Road. Broke up pond, recreation area down there. I think that should be expanded. Plenty <coughs> around for uh, digging out the pond and make it deeper. At the same time, I think there should be a path along the east side of the pond for walking. So I think the park direction look into that. And at the same time, I know we have some money, I think, available for dredging out the pond. And a lot of people use that. I see people there every day fishing and walking down through there. So the new path along the uh, pond there, that excellent job. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Anybody else around? It looks like it's done. Okay. Um, we will not have an executive session tonight. So the only thing we need to do is to adjourn. Is there a motion? I'll move to adjourn our regular meeting at 7.58. Second. Made and seconded. It's non-debatable. All in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at 7.58 p.m. <laughs>